Welcome back to the Tetris tutorial. So far, we have created lots of basic things. We have the basic pieces, we have movement, and we have collisions. For this part, I want to work on the final bit to actually have a game, which is that if we have a full row, I want to get rid of that row. Once again, here I'm back in the code, and I want to work inside of game.py. Most importantly, I want to work inside of the game class in there, let me minimize everything. I want to create a new method. Let's do it all the way at the bottom. This new method is going to be called check finished rows. No need for custom parameters. And in there, we need to have a couple of things. Let's go through it one by one. Number one, we want to get the row indexes. Or more specifically, we want to get the full row indexes. Which means if there's a full row, we want to have the index of that row. And when I talk about rows, I am talking about rows inside of the field data, the one we created in the last video. Getting that is actually quite easy. First of all, I want to create a list. Let's call it delete rows. By default, this is going to be an empty list. Then I want to create a for loop for row in self.field data. This would give me all of the rows, but I want to get the indexes of these rows. That way I can identify them later on quite easily. To get the indexes, you want to use the enumerate method. This one, besides the actual row, is also going to return an index, which means for i and row is going to return the index and then the actual row. In there, all I really want to do is I want to check if all of the values exist. By default, the value for field data is zero. This one would evaluate to false in Python, so if there's any zero, all wouldn't trigger. However, if we have all row and we have blocks for every single entry, this one would trigger. And if this one triggers, I want to get the delete rows and then append the index. If it does trigger, however, I want to get delete rows and then append the index. With this snippet of code, we know which rows would be full and we get the index of those rows. Next up then, we want to check if delete rows exist at all. So if there are any rows we need to delete. Then I want to create a for loop to go through all of these rows. Let's call it for delete row in delete rows. First of all, I want to delete the full rows. That is going to be quite easily done. All we need is for block in self.field data and then the delete row. Remember that this delete row is just an index, the one we have gotten up here, meaning we can use it again to get specific rows from the field data. And then all we want to do is get the block and kill it. Kill is an inbuilt method of any sprite. And if you run it, you are destroying the sprite. Or more specifically, you are removing it from any group. That way it would not be visible or updated anymore. And before we continue, let's try all of this. For that though, we first of all have to figure out when to call it. And the best way I find is inside of create new tetromino. Because if this one is run, we know that the piece has landed. So before we are creating a new tetromino, I want to check finished rows. All right, let's try all of this. If I now run main.py and I have to play for a while, so I am probably going to speed all of this up and please do not judge my Tetris skills. All right, there we have one piece and if it goes down, we are deleting that part of it. And we can continue playing and I'm getting a lot of S and Z pieces. It's a bit weird. Um, I don't know why this is happening. It's just really unlucky. Um, okay, this is actually getting super weird. Okay, there we have another piece and there's one issue. And that is, you could see, the O-shaped piece got deleted before it reached the bottom. Let's talk about why that happened. Back inside of game.py, this we don't need anymore, when we are running all of this. More specifically, in this particular line, we are deleting the full rows. However, we have to be a bit more specific. We are only creating the sprites, so the stuff that we can see from this list we are not getting rid of the values inside of field data. The way you want to think about it is that we basically work with two different fields. 
we have the first field, and this is the actual, let's call it the visible field. Inside of there, we have all of the columns and rows, and then in there, we get a couple of pieces. And let me add one more row. Besides this visible field, we also have the field data. And this is one list that contains individual lists. So lots of smaller lists in there. Those two data structures are supposed to mimic each other, which means if we have one piece like this one in there, we should have one row inside of the field data and then capture it in there, something like this. The issue, however, is that when we are calling block.kill, we are only getting rid of this one field. Inside of the field data, this thing sticks around. And that would cause some inconsistencies in the game. So what you have just seen in the game, we had a full row at the bottom. Because of that, inside of the field data, we also had a full column. And then when we called this for loop here, we have gotten rid of this line. So it wasn't visible anymore and looked like there was space. However, inside of the field data, so all of this, we kept the data around, meaning that there are blocks left, but these blocks would not be visible, but the collision would still occur. I hope that makes sense. The basic issue is that we are only getting rid of the visible pieces, but the data structure is not updated. This we also have to do. To achieve that, we will need two steps. Number one is to move down the blocks. And after we have done that, I want to rebuild the field data, which basically means we are killing the blocks, then we are moving down all of the blocks, and then from the blocks, so all of the sprites, we are going to rebuild the field data. That way the data will stay accurate compared to what we see in the game. First of all, I want to move down all of the blocks. For that, we will need a for loop for row in self.fieldData. Next up, we want to target every single block, which means for block in row. Inside of there, we want to check if the block actually exists, which means if in this piece we have a block and this would not trigger if there's a zero. That way we can make sure we are only working with the blocks and we are ignoring all of the zeros. Besides that, we also want to check if block.post.y is smaller than the delete row. If that is the case, I simply want to get the block again and then increase position.y by one. I hope the logic for this one makes sense. Let me draw it out really quick. Once again, we have the field and let's add a couple of rows and I am really bad at drawing straight lines. But anyway, imagine we have one full line at the bottom and then a couple of pieces on top. Those two should work just fine. We are now going to start all the way at the top. We are getting the index and this index would be index 19. Then next up, we are going to delete all of this that happens there. So we would get rid of this one row or more specifically, all of the blocks inside of that row. After that, the really important bit is we are going to check all of the blocks above it, which means that we're going to check if block post.y is smaller than the lead row. For example, for these two blocks, the position.y would be 18, which is smaller than 19. Super advanced math. Because of that, we want to move them down or increase y by one. That way, they would go to the next row. But once again, do not be fooled. After all of this, we are only updating the visible pieces of the game, the actual data structure. So field data is still unchanged. And this we have to address in rebuild field data. Also notice the indentation for this one. We are working after the for loop. Although still inside of if delete rows. I first of all want to get a clean field data again which means I can copy this actually inside of the init method. I want to do this nested for loop once again. With that, we get a completely clean sheet. Then next up, I want to look at the current blocks, meaning these blocks. And from that position, I want to recreate the field data to get an accurate sheet of where we have all of our blocks. 
This is going to be your exercise. I want you guys to look at the POS attribute of the blocks and use that to create an accurate field data list. Pause the video now and try to figure this one out. I want to first of all create a for loop. For block in self dot, call it sprites, I think. Just to double check, I want to look at all of the sprites inside of this sprite group, which I should have mentioned we can do with simply a for loop. With that, we are getting all of the blocks. This we want to use to update self.fieldData. Remember, after this line, field data has only zeros, nothing else. But this we want to update, and for that, we will need a row once again, and we will need a column. The row is going to be the y part of the block position. Once again, we want to get an integer and then block.pos.y. The same we are going to do with the column. This is going to be an integer with block.pos.x. And then the actual value we want to associate is going to be the block. And that actually finishes everything. Now to test the entire game, I want to make some very small changes. Right now we are getting a random piece, but this makes testing it a bit annoying. So I'm going to comment out this line and then instead add an i in there. The same thing I want to do inside of the init method. I don't want to have a random piece, I want to have the i piece. If I run the game again, we are now only getting i shapes. And let me speed up all of this. All right, we are nearly done. I'm going to leave one i piece on top so we know what's going to move down. And now, we have moved or we have removed all of them and we moved down this one piece and everything else is still working just fine. We also keep our collisions and this is looking really good. That will also finish another major part. So we are making a lot of progress. And before I finish, I want to get rid of this eye shape and do the same thing down here. So we get randomness again.